we're home. It's the same day of those beans that we were just making an absolute mess. Okay, well, finally we got some daylight for once. Typically we're doing this, it's after dark. Uh, but I'll show you guys back in the wagons in. I'm not wild about leaving beans out overnight. Corn has that waxy layer and then the starch will release the moisture fairly easy when you dry it. But just between the protein and the oil, beans don't dry well. Um, when I was, I mean, I'm still kicking around the idea of getting a dryer. Uh, but the neighbor told me about horror stories of people having their dryers catch on fire. Um, okay, so back to the point. We're putting the beans inside so they don't get any frost or dew on them tonight. Put them under roof. Um, the TR is still out at the field where we just made all those ruts. And this one is, we've turned it around. Uh, it's full of gas, just about. Oh, we're getting there, greasing it, oiling it. I still need to flush the hydraulic fluid out of it, and one of the idlers out here, the bearing, is just about shot. It's not dead, but um, I could foresee us getting, you know, a little bit down the field and the chain will jump off because the sprocket fell apart. I can get one of those fairly close tomorrow and we take beans to the elevator. And that is my lovely gas tank. Yep. About the pump. Oil, or drum came free with oil, I guess. Uh, it was fun going to the gas station, because I don't have a gas tank. The, uh, <laughs> the, the attendant was wondering what we're doing on the gas. Which, since we get diesel delivered, I could have gas brought to the farm also. I just don't have a separate tank. And just to have that drum filled isn't worth them coming out here to fill it. So I'm also on the loose lookout for, uh, I don't know, 150 gallon tank for gas or something. Hopefully I wouldn't burn that much more gas harvesting with that thing. If I do, it means I either picked up a lot of ground to harvest or something went wrong. Hopefully the first choice if that ever happens. Okay, so we're going to put you on the tractor and we're going to back these wagons in. Well, BAME Farm fans, things are a little out of sync here. Um, this video is from way back near the end of November. Um, but we're finally digging through our archives of video. I was hoping to get this out much more in a timely fashion. Um, but here we are in the middle of January, finally getting around to it. Um, so see we're back in wagons. I left this all pretty much in slow speed. Uh, Kinda of showing off back in the wagons in some of the skill. Um, like I've tried to teach Brad, which I need to give him more time in the daylight. Like I said, usually we are doing this very much in a dark setting. Um, so we find ourselves in the daylight for once doing this, uh, which is wonderful. And when you're by yourself, you gotta roll the tractor around by hand a little bit and hope you're close and on flat ground and everything rolls smoothly. Now, earlier, um, I pointed out uh, the TR-70 gas in the background and that we were working on at the time. That was before I'd taken it to the field. Now, in the Harvesting After Dark video, um, I will pick, off here, talk pick up here talking about uh, what happened um, that fateful day, so yeah, we had the fire. Our combine was fine. Uh, so that is fantastic. Um, just a little bit of raw gas. It was only running on probably seven of eight cylinders. And a slight uh, bit of spark got past the spark arrestor. It doesn't have a muffler. Um, just a spark arrestor, as, it's, as they call it. Hopefully it's doing something useful. Uh, so that lit the stubble on fire. No stand-on corn was burnt. All was fine. Now, over break, I'm talking about the week around Christmas and New Year's, uh, we put new plugs in it, put new points in it. I got Borg Warner points to put in it. Finally got something decent, went to O'Reilly's, um, and, and got uh, better points. Um, as far as I know, at least they weren't made in China. 
Um, the ones I was getting from the local KOI were, and yeah, the one set I got right before we put the new rebuilt carburetor on it, uh, those lasted about 10 minutes. And that's kind of led to the whole carburetor rebuild debacle. I don't know, maybe we could have got away without it. Who knows? Now, over break, I have to put in plugs. Uh, we also fiddled with the governor a little bit. And we tried to adjust the amount of gas the carburetor was dumping to the engine. I don't know how successful we were with the carburetor adjustment. We thought we found the screws and found the proper tool, which what we thought were the screws were an inverse flathead screwdriver. Uh, so what does that mean? It means we had to use a valve stem extractor tool for, like, for tires to try to turn them. And for the amount of force we had to put on them, we thought it was way too extreme. So we thought we did our, did our best at adjusting, because it really wasn't a whole lot of anything. We just went with it, played with the governor. Oh, we also played with the timing, which is a pain on that engine. The little needle they give um, to see the marks on the damper pulley um, is really isn't visible. We were just kind of playing with it. Um, we found the marks, and Dad had me try to mark it, which I couldn't squeeze my head in behind the engine or through the grain tank behind the engine to really see anything useful. So I, was, I could see it, but I couldn't get my hand in there with my head in the way and with the light. Um, so I made a mark. It was close, and as we adjusted the time, we kind of did almost did it by ear and did kind of see my mark a little bit with the chalk. Now I got the first wagon in. That was a small wagon. That one put it so we could easily get it out of the barn. The second wagon is full. It's very much ready to go to the elevator. And so we played with the timing, had it running pretty good, didn't think it was missing after putting new plugs. And the new plugs I got were a more of a polished shine to them, whereas the first set of plugs we put in it were a, just kind of a black steel. Uh, they were about the same number Motocraft plugs, except there was not a suffix A on these plugs, but they were the same number elsewise. Um, I can't remember the number, it was like a B something 420A, and the second set of plugs didn't have the A, I believe. This so I had it running pretty good. Had to play with the governor once we took it back to the field. We had it adjusted so it wouldn't quite throw the fuel on the fire, and it showed. Um, it was kept it running a little slow, so I somewhat forcefully suggested that we make this thing run faster so we can get done. That's the annoying thing about combines is they are made to run at whatever engine is put in them, whatever that engine's full rated RPM is, because they don't want anybody to be able to run it too fast. But for some engines. Sometimes the factory rated speed is a little fast, like on the 1086, yeah, they say 2400, but I hardly ever pull with it much over PTO speed, which is maybe 2100. Um, so we did get my corn finished. Um, we have about 14 acres of dad's corn left. And the video will wrap up as this wagon gets put in. Slowly. Had to do a little repositioning here. Most of them pretty good and good on the first try, in which these wagons are much easier than wagon loads of hay. I need to set Brad up in, during the daylight with an empty hay wagon so we can kind of get a little bit of a spatial awareness uh, back in this barn. Because we got to come down the hill and make a right-hand turn. It's not really a straight shot. <coughs> Let's see, has somebody guessed? in the last voiceover we did uh, about harvesting at night. Yeah, it sounds like I had a cold. That's because we were all passing the flu here around the farm. Luckily, Brad didn't get it, but Mom, Dad, and myself, we all did. So that kind of slowed things down a little